Welcome to the Berea Podcast. One of the things we love about Berea is getting to know the people around town. One of the people we've really gotten to know recently is Jimmy Lou Jackson. She is just a wonderful character in Berea. She's so irreverent, so funny, so knowledgeable because of her family's history here in Berea. We thought she would be a great person to have everyone hear her story and get to know her like we do. Absolutely. We went down to her shop, Hot Flash Beads, and recorded her on one special Friday. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview with Jimmy Lou Jackson. Hey, Jimmy, introduce yourself, your full name, and not where you live, but like the kind part of town, what you would call it. Okay. My name is Jimmy Lou Jackson, and I live on Boone Street. And now, that is, old, is that Old Town? Uh, it, no, it, I live on the other side of Old Town. Old Town's on one side of the ridge, and uh, Boone Street's on the other side of the ridge. So. Is that a part of town, though? Yeah. What do you call that part of town? Well, uh, right now, the train's going through, so we, <laughs> we get to listen to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, uh, it's just uh, in Berea, when I was growing up, there was the East End and the West End. And the the East End kids were usually college students, uh, I mean, college faculty children, and they went to the foundation school. And then we were the West End, and we were the kids that went to the Berea High School. And, and where was that? That was at the top of the Boone Street Hill where the Real National, uh, where the ba- the bank is now, the People's Bank is. So there was another building there? Yeah, there was a there was a building there, and it was uh, it was a school that we went first grade through, through senior and high school. All of us went went in there together. And, and that was the East End? That, no, no West that was the West End. Oh, sorry, that so was the West End. It. Yeah. East End were the college faculty kids, uh-huh. and the West, West End, End were the other kids. Other kids, yeah. Yes. Uh, she just told us that. Yeah, <laughs> you can't hear. All you can hear is the train right now. <laughs> Little boys and trains, you know. <laughs> it's one of those kind of things. That sounded like a Lancaster Forty Three. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you. But anyway, we uh, Berea High School was uh, the the school where we all went, and it was called Fruit Jar High. Now wow. it was called Fruit Jar because. Back when they decided to make an independent school in Berea, the people who were working on that project got mad at each other, and one of the guys was drinking uh, water out of a, a fruit jar. This is the story that was told, and he picked up the fruit jar and, and threw it at somebody else. Wow. So it was called fruit jar. But then I, there are other stories. So who knows there was a fruit jar that had flowers in it and somebody but anyway a fruit jar got thrown at somebody but everybody so. called that fruit, fruit jar. jar that was fruit jar and when did that come down and when did the community school uh, start? the community school started in 1968 or 69 i'm not sure because i graduated in 61 okay and my sister my younger sister was the last graduating class of, of the at fruit, uh, at jar. fruit jar yeah okay okay so that's bell my sister bell jackson so okay and um, we, I went to school there, but I came. We came to Berea. My father, uh, his his parents were all here, and his, my grandmother, she was a Blanton, and the Blantons came here in the 1850s because they were abolitionists, and they wanted to um, raise their children here in, in Berea because it was an abolitionist school going on. So there's a real history of uh, of. Maria and, and the Blantons. And that was like almost the starting yeah. and everything. In the 1850s, yeah. That, yeah. He came here, Christopher Blanton, and, and one of his uh, grandsons ran the Berea Citizen when the college ran the paper at that time. You know, when I, when I was here, the college had the paper, they had the dairy, they had the chicken farm out on Scaffold Cane Road, they had uh, the fire department was run by the college, and the kids, the, the, the students were the, the firemen. Yeah, and they lived in what is now the Promenade Gallery. That was the firehouse, and with that garage in yeah, the back yeah, and all yeah, that, that, that makes uh, yeah, that was architecturally the old, yeah, that makes that sense. That was the firehouse, and uh, it was. Where did you buy your skittles? <laughs> I didn't eat Skittles or no. didn't play Skittles. Though <laughs> <laughs> there, we actually uh, we could sneak into to Boone Tavern, and but see, lo, being local kids, we didn't get into Boone Tavern very often because that was you know it was kind of like East End was the people who had money and the West End were the people who had children. 
I, I mean, that, that, that's the way it was, you know. It was it, it, that, and it pretty much felt that way, you, uh-huh. you know, growing up. And then, of course, now as growing up and going to school here, uh, I grew up on a little t- a little street called Boone Street. It's over the hill on the other side of the ridge. And my great grandfather on the other side of the family, the the Jackson side of the family, had a brickyard where I still live, and I have a, I actually have the deed to the property that that brickyard was on, and it was in the 1800s also, early 1800s. Mm. So uh, we've been li- that the Jackson family's been living there since that 1800s, wow. 1840s, 50s, somewhere like that. Now. We all, there are three of us girls, Jackson girls, my sister Dinah Ray, she's uh, the only one that's married, and then my sister Belle and I. And so we still live in what we call the Jackson compound. Oh. There, each one of us has a house, but it's all on the property that our great-grandfather owned, and we well. still live in there. I tell everybody we're too poor to get out of town. No. <laughs> that is awesome, though. Yeah. so much so, history. Yeah, that is been really... here. But anyway, we my my mother was from Irvin, which is that's a good place to be from. You know, if I had a friend in jail and a friend in Irvin, I'd get the friend out of Irvin first. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Hope we don't have anybody from Irvin. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she was from Irvin, so they when he met my mother, they stayed in Irvin, and uh, he went off to the war and came back. And uh, after he came back, I think the first day he came back from the war, I took my first steps. So, or I took my first steps the day he left, and then I was three years old when he came back. Wow. So, and that was um, then in the forties. Then my and you mother. Remember that? I remember the night the war ended in Japan, and that's a real story because my mother. I didn't realize that was what was happening. I was telling my mother that you remember that night our dog got that Fourth of July our dog got scared by the firecrackers and she said honey you can't remember that she said that was the night the war ended in japan i said oh yes i remember because we had a puppy dog that went with us everywhere and we back then a dog would go into a restaurant and eat uh, and cookie was the dog's name and it lay under our feet and eat well, we'd eat and we went to gawk brackets restaurant in ravenna kentucky we're having our uh, our meal and somebody threw a firecracker under the table and it burnt the dog Oh. So I remember that. So I was two years old, but I, I stif- uh, definitely remember that. Emotionally remember Emo- yeah. that. So I remember the night the war ended in Japan. But anyway, we moved back to Berea in 1953. I was 10 years old. To the Jackson compound? To the Jackson compound. Actually moved into the old house that my great-grandfather had built. It was a log house, but they had put weatherboarding over the side. When you went up the stairs, it, it was a steep climb up the stairs, but because of what they had done, it's connected the dog trot. You know, they, they had the, what? the dog trot. That's where dogs walked through the middle of the house. You know, there was a cabin on one side, a cabin on the other side. They connect, and if they didn't connect it, they called it the dog trot. Oh, okay. Uh, but they connected the dog trot and made enough stairs. And it, now, the pig house, I don't know any kind of history of it, but it had that same, same structure, structure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it had the, the whole, uh, And that's called a dog trot. Dog trot, yeah, huh. that's okay. a dog trot. That's what, but anyway, they closed that in and, and, and put a stairway upstairs. And the lumber, and, and it was, they were popular logs, and they were probably um, two feet wide, so, you know, wow. just and from, one pop, one, from one poplar tree. Big poplar. Mm-hmm. And they would, uh, they, I can remember that, but they were rough sawn because I could you could feel the splinters yeah. on them. Huh. And the only heat in the house, at, at that time, Berea didn't have gas. So we used fireplaces, uh, coal fireplaces, and then we had a warm morning stove in the back room. The only heat that we had upstairs was the, what heat came from the chimney. So we huh. would, we, my mother would hold a quilt up in front of the fireplace and wrap us up in it. We'd run upstairs and get in the bed and try to try to stay warm what, because it was really cold up there. You wake up in the morning, you'd have frost on your upper lip, you know, kind of. Like, <laughs> <laughs> until you, yeah, so it was it was cold. It was hard living there. Huh. And um, so, but we lived on Boone Street. But the Boone Street was the place to live if you were a West End kid, because the, uh, there were probably. 10, 12, 15 kids all, and we played on we played on the creek bank because that Boone Street actually is part of the old Dixie Highway, and the Dixie Highway followed Boone tra- Boone's trail through Kentucky. It was a part of the old Wilderness Road. 
So that Boone Street is? Yes. Uh -huh. I, that's interesting. Yeah. So when if you look at the history, um, Daniel Boone followed the brushy fork of Silver Creek uh, into Berea, and that's where my house is. It's right on the brushy fork of Silver Creek. So mm. that would have been, you know, that's part of the, that trail. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it, anyway, we'd all play on the creek bed. Now, so uh, on the bus tour that I went uh -huh. on, they talked about 25. Yes, US 25 being Dixie Highway. Mm. Yeah. See, but what happens so, is Boone Street runs Boone Street runs into 25 at um, down on down the road a bit it, through Slate Lake Road. Okay. Slate Slate Lake runs right into 25, but the Boone Street was the road that that would have that. And connected now up at that. The circle or yeah. The, okay, yeah. at the yeah. market. Mark, yeah. Good so, Mario's. Good deal. So, and that's um, but we played on that creek bank every night. You know, we 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 build a fire and you know do just roast marshmallows or sit around and tell stories or play games. You know. Wow. So, right. but. All right. So we we're hearing wood chimes right now mm -hmm. in the background. We heard that train before. Tell us where we are and then what you're doing every so often. Okay. Right now we're in Old Town, what we call Old Town. Um, that is actually next to the, the L, old L&N Depot, which is the uh, last brick depot left on the L&N line, I think. Oh, yeah. And it was um, actually my grandfather and his brother were Masons, and they did the... They did the uh, the work on the plaster in there. If you go in there and look at that plaster job, my, my grandfather and his brother did that. Huh. He had a twin brother. So anyway, this is the uh, old. How'd you tell them apart? I didn't know. I didn't know one of them. Uh, Uncle Uncle John. My grandfather was John, and Uncle Bill died before I was born. So, oh, there you so, go. So. But my grandfather was a lot older than my grandmother, so it, there was a there was a yeah. real history. And his mother was a nurse at the Battle of Richmond during the Civil War. Really? Yeah. Elizabeth Jackson would, and and wow. I've got I've got her, her obituary. It talks about her being a, a nurse at, during that battle. Wow. That, that's a pretty cool. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Isn't that the coolest thing? This is like come back. I've got stories to tell, honey. We we were storytellers. <laughs> we were storytellers. No, but I get I get wandering off into other things. So you know, no, it's no, like no. so. But anyway, Boone Street was the place to live back then, and we played at night. Uh, there were four four. Let's see, me and Peggy and Martha Ann, and uh, there were about four or five w girls my age that lived on Boone Street, and we all just played all the time. And then the, there's a couple of boys, you know, but you know, boys at that age, you know. So, uh, but we had a really good time. And um, back when my mother, uh, she started a little square dance group. Now I didn't square dance, but I did the calling for for the for one of, one of the teams. And my sister Belle and her age group there, she's Belle six years younger than now. She they had a group uh, that mother taught how to square dance, and we actually we dragged that old 45. RPM record player out to the out uh, to the middle of the road, and we dance right in the middle of Boone Street. You know, huh. <laughs> and we just everybody'd circle up, and you know, there might be a car every now and then, but they knew we were. And they knew the dance was going, going on, on, so they didn't come down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. But so we're in Old Town now. And we're in Old Town. Old Town is on the opposite side of of the hill from the from the Boone Street side, but it started. Uh, as around the train depot and of course we quit having uh, passenger service in the 1960s but uh, back when uh, kids were coming out of the mountains they would ride the train the L&N train down here to the depot and then the they had a cart that they would come down from the college and pick the kids up and and take them up to school but there was a passenger service here until the 60s the hotel building next door to where we are right now we're in uh, the barn building called uh, called the honeysuckle vine which my, i have my shop in here my okay. sister and i have the honeysuckle vine and i have hot flash beads and we'll go into that later okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh this but was, so the building is honey, honey vine honeysuckle, honeysuckle, vine. honeysuckle vine honeysuckle vine yeah okay. and, it, and it's got the red roof red roof on it yeah it's like a barn building. Yeah, it looks That's like it's said. actually built to be a blacksmith shop and it, it, the land is leased from the city and it was leased like 40 years ago for, for um, 
I can't believe it's maybe it's, it has been 40 years. I can't believe it's been that long. But the blacksmith uh, Charlie Herrera and and uh, Jeff Farmer leased the land because it was just setting. You know, it was just uh, nothing going on down here. Charlie bought the hotel building, which is now the Arts Council sp uh, space, mm -hmm. and he was redoing that. And he wanted to build a blacksmith shop next door. So he leased the land, and he and Jeff built the building. And then eventually we bought the building, half the building, from Charlie. And then Jeff had half of it. Now Jeff's got all of it back. So we, we're, we're getting out of the out of the home uh, building owning thing. Oh. So, But anyway, um, we started our business down here when there was, there was uh, Neil and Mary Comer, who have a uh, place called the Weaver's Bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, Charlie Harvey had a shaker box baking place in the old hotel building back in the back. That's and then the Coopers made made um, Cooper shop made they made candles. Those there were four of us down here, and we got together and decided it was time to promote this area of town because everybody was going to the College Square, and uh, they didn't know we even existed. So we started. Um, I actually started walking the College Square and inviting people with a little brochure down to the Artist Village in Old in in uh, in uh, Ellen and Old Ellen and Depot area. So we find and we actually just named it Old Town just because we needed some way to designate this area. That that was not that was not uh, something that was. That's not original. Not original, no. What we just needed an area to be able to wait. You know, Old Town separated from the. From the College, College Square. Square. Yeah. Gotcha. So uh, we, as as that progressed, more and more uh, uh, artists started moving down here because we were low rent district. You know. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. You couldn't you couldn't afford a place up on the College Square. Mm -hmm. You know. But working student working crafts people. You know, we could come get here come here and, and find an old building and, and right. move in and and make a make a place. And that's what's happened over time. Now in 1990s can't remember the tornado came through and blew most of the a lot of this away huh. uh, blew down Charlie Harvey's building and so there's a new building there now uh, where his his was and then the because there is, you can, as you come through, there are old buildings uh -huh. and then stuff that are yeah. relatively yeah. yeah, and the new came from uh, actually uh, rehab by nature, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, that and during that time, the state of Kentucky got interested in Berea because uh, uh, there were some people pushing for the uh, for the state to push. Uh, uh, tourism. tourism, yeah. So the artisan center became it came right out of that tornado. So and then a group of us also um, got together and formed a group called the Renaissance Group, and we lobbied the city to clean up our our uh, streetscape because the the it was they had piled. Uh, layer after layer of blacktop on the street so it was the, the curbs were you know way down and it mm. so and we went to and we got some money from the mm -hmm. from the state and money from uh, different air uh, grants and we redid the street streetscape we put in the lamps the the lights and, and built and the it's wall. It's so nice. It's walkable. Yeah. It's so walkable. Yeah. It's so walkable. Yeah. It's really nice. And so it, good job. Yeah. So, it, you know, <laughs> yeah. And we really appreciate, you know, the city uh, people, uh, the city council at that time was very agreeable to, to making uh, tourism. Uh, and if you, tourism, tourism's really are one of our main industries in Berea. Oh, yeah. Because uh, I know that they did a study in, at, in 2009 and we at that in that time at that year we we, we were accountable for five million two hundred thousand mm -hmm. uh in in income and employed 800 and something people so your income is five million two hundred. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> let's see i can't even think that many zeros <laughs> <laughs> uh, 5.2 million that's yeah. what okay. 5.2 million 
so that I mean that's what the study showed that, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it employed uh, 890 something people that right. so that's a, that's a big industry it's real yeah, yeah sure and uh, I have two questions right. for you so uh, one question you were going to tell us about the tab because yeah. you listened to our our, our our episode on the housing right. when we did, when Troy did uh, the they get on bus. the bus mm -hmm. so tell us about the tab you're my source for this okay um, the, the tab at Brea College actually was the tabernacle like like you assumed it was but it also after they built the uh, Phelps Stokes Chapel it became the the tab that's where theater was we did I did a couple of plays there I, I was uh, an actor in a couple they would do a special play oh. but now it burned physically where was it it was where the Jekyll Drama Center is oh now. oh okay. okay so it was called the tabernacle it, it was now, called when I think of a tabernacle I think of a religious yeah. building is it it was probably it, where they had you know at, they had uh, church meetings until oh. they I'm not sure but that but we called it the tab and it, it had a th you know it had theater seats or, or and probably the pews that they were talking about would I gotta decline that so probably okay, the pews. Probably, probably the pews that they borrowed came from the ta from the tab, the, what they call the tabernacle. And it burns. So it it's burns. no longer it's on no campus. Longer. Oh, okay. And it was where Jekyll Drama Center yes, is now. Exactly. Okay. So no. it is not Phelps Stokes. No. So because we were, I was we had almost. I don't remember if we it said was all that. Me. Like, I'll take any. Yeah. He's the, okay. So that's really interesting. Yeah. The second is anyone ever has anyone else ever recorded you about the history of Berea? Is mm. this is this the first time this has happened? Well, some TV? people have asked me about about Berea High before. You know. Okay. So about my uh, experiences there, but no, yeah. no. But well, I'll tell you a story anyway. Well, I, well, I I'm just thinking you're right. such a resource. Well, that, oh I, wanted a, I wanted Delana to come down and talk to you because we just like you. And all the <laughs> whole, I know, and there's just <laughs> all kinds of history. Well, you so, know about the history of, on Boone Street. You didn't know about Boone Right. Uh -huh. I, I, you had told me when I asked you uh -huh. in the interview that your great, you know, the yeah. great grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tell, tell about the business that's here and, you know, what they can okay. do to get in all touch right. with you. Uh, I am uh, what they call a, gla a lamp worker or a uh, torch worker in glass and I was 52 when I started using a torch so my little business is called hot flash beads okay. and I tell my customers we don't cure a hot flash but we make you look really cool while you're having <laughs> it <laughs> I bought some today did you get you some hot flash beads alright we make it that yeah <laughs> but the, I really it. I was um, it, I, I was a biology major at Berea and uh, my my labor was first job was weaving at Fireside Weavers. My second job I went and applied for the job at the hospital lab because I knew that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I worked at the hospital lab until I left school, and I went. The, the my supervisor there knew some people in Lexington, got me a job in a lab in Lexington. So I went directly from Berea College to a lab in Lexington, and in a lab in Lexington, I found out that I could go on to school to train to do what they call cytology. That's to looking for cancer cells and body fluids. Hmm. And I got free training for, for that from a Cancer Control Research Project grant. So I got all my schooling for free. Uh, just, wow. just, uh, I, you know, I have found out that you end up where you're supposed to be if you just let it happen. Okay. So what happened with me is I was 55. I was working at a lab in Lexington. And a big corporation bought the small lab I worked for, and they let seven people go. Well, a 55-year-old woman with diabetes is somebody that's going to be a problem for you. Huh. So they handed me a box and escorted me to the door. Now, my sister Dinah and I already had the honeysuckle vine. We had started this business back in the 80s. And uh, I thought, if I, I don't think I can stand to go back to work like that. Yeah. I've had so much responsibility for all these years. Mm. I want to do something that I can have fun doing. So I said, can I have just a part of the sh shop that I can set up my business? Best thing that ever happened to me. This mm. this little business paid my health insurance for 10 years until I went on Medicare, thank God. <laughs> and so it really, like I said, you end up where you're supposed to be. If you just, you know, just got, got to trust it. Right. Well, when we walked in, there were people here talking to you already, and you were showing your yeah. craft and everything. So you, you're available for I, that. If I you're love here, to do show? it. I love to. I love to entertain. <laughs> <laughs>
I so, think you're underutilized. Uh, I, am really, I am really thinking about this. So I think you're a great resource. Oh, wait, so but, we're going to put the video of you, if that's all right sure, with you, up on fine. so we can show you how you do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. is that. Is that okay? Sure, that's fine. Right, so go to the website, and there will be the video that shows a design that you did just make. Okay. That was pretty incredible. And uh, is there? do you have, like, an email address? I am Hot Flash Beads at windstream.net so hot flesh beads at windstream.net all small case okay and yeah. people will be emailing thank you so much You're for your quite time welcome. this yeah. was so unexpected I don't think and this so will be fun our only time talking with you no. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much to tell so little time <laughs> we really got to, we got to mine all that we really have like this is weird touch the surface. I don't <laughs> the Jimmy Lee Jackson <laughs> experience. Maybe that, that's the title, <laughs> the Jimmy Lee yeah, Jackson experience. Experience, experience. experience. yeah. yeah. Well, awesome. I never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so, so much, You're Jamie. welcome. Thank Thanks you so for much. asking. Thank it's you, always fun. That is, that is great. Thank you so much, Jimmy Lou, for making yourself available. We are just really enjoying getting to know you better and love your stories, and I am sure we will be back many more times to get your knowledge, and to get your funny, funny, funny stories. Yes. While we were there to record Jimmy Lou, she also was actually practicing her craft of making the beads, and so we recorded her doing that and have that up on our website for anyone who would be interested. It was a great thing to get to see, and to listen to her describe it is really fun. So the video is over at www.thebereapodcast.com. Next week, we'll be back with another episode. Bye. Bye. <laughs>